Hey y'all, I am back from spring break with the family and I'm ready to film again. I have a lot to catch you all up on, I think, or maybe it's just a bunch of nothing, but let's do a get ready with me in chat. I'm gonna start with primer, which I don't always use. Sometimes I just skip that step. This is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, an oldie but a goodie, very inexpensive. This is in the color Universal Sheer, which kind of has this almost like little peachy tint to it. However, there is a white one. And is there a clear one? If you are a user of this, let me know if there's a clear one. I'm forgetting. I feel like there's a third kind of type that you can use from this lineup. Anyway, how did y'all do with the Sephora and Ulta sales? If you remember from the last video, we had talked about the Sephora sale coming up and I had my cart ready to go. So I want to tell you a little bit about damage I did and did not do in that sale. But then Ulta got smart and launched their own 20% off sale. They were like, okay, Sephora, you are not the only rodeo in town. We're going to give you a little competition. And so Sephora had these 20% off sales also going on at the same time, which I thought was brilliant of them. Honestly, from a marketing perspective, I guess if they had done maybe even like a 25% off sale, <laughs> imagine the competition that that would have given Sephora. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I did end up ordering some things from Sephora, but not a lot. I realized that I didn't have a lot of interest in makeup products. If you remember, sort of at the top of the year, I did this video on like things that I don't need to buy this year and makeup was one of them. I ended up doing a second Sephora haul with some makeup products, but in general, I didn't do like a whole cart full of foundations and blushes and eyeshadow palettes and all that stuff that I normally do, the concealers, the whole nine. I did focus in on one product. But for today, let me finish getting ready here with y'all. I, for my concealer, I'm going to use the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. This is in the color 4.5 Granola. Granola. So I had some fragrances that I wanted to get in the Sephora sale and I did. One of them worked out really well, like I thought it would, and the other was a blind buy, and I don't know if it's going to work out for me. So the one that worked out is Flower Bomb Tiger Lily. This one here, I ended up getting the small bottle. If there are small bottles, I'm trying to go for that instead of the big bottles because my collection is redonkulously out of control, <laughs> and there's just no need to have like all big bottles of everything. So this is a winner, and then this one I'm just not sure of. This is Net Pear Jam, and... I don't know. There are parts of it that I really like. And then there's a part of it that I'm like, Ooh, I don't know about that. So I don't know. I might be either putting this up for sale or returning it or exchanging with someone. If someone is interested in this, I think the bottle design is cute with the pink on the bottom that kind of comes up. It looks like an aquarium, right? With the pink coming up like lighting or something. I got some travel sprays of some other fragrances and I'm trying to remember what else. I feel like I got like a skincare product or two that I needed to re-up on. But generally speaking, I didn't do too bad in that first haul. And then I went back and <laughs> you know how you get on these obsessions with certain types of products. So I don't know what my dang problem is, but my latest obsession is with lipsticks and in particular luxury lipsticks, which is silly because I have a lot of Maybelline and L'Oreal lipsticks that I really swear by and I think are wonderful so why I have this obsession with like Gucci lipsticks and Valentino lipsticks and YSL lipsticks and everything is just, is it just like the packaging thing? I don't really know. But anyway, I put some in my cart and those are coming home to me on the next order. I'm trying to think that I get anything else. Oh, you know, those body sprays. I forget the name of that, but it's like a bergamot and Hinoki body spray and a matching body wash. So those are coming. And then our daughter wanted some products. So of course, baby girl gets whatever she wants. All she has to do is send me the link and I add the mic to cart and bring them home. So all in all, I didn't do awful in the Sephora sale like I have in the past where I've just gone absolutely bananas. I did end up getting a couple things from Ulta as well. In particular, some travel sprays or fragrances I've been wanting to try. I think travel sprays are one of those things I said I wasn't going to buy. So that, I need to do a little bit of reflection. <laughs> on what the thing is with travel sprays. I think for me, it's like, I want to try the things, but I don't want to necessarily commit to having to have a big bottle. And then if I don't like it, selling it off or passing it along, I don't know. So it's like this balance of trying to figure out when to do that, like when to blind buy and just go for the bottle and when to do the travel spray instead. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to it. I don't think there's a science behind it. It's more like an art form where I just kind of use my own discernment to figure out, is this something that I would rather try in travel spray first? versus otherwise. For example, I have this 1111 Lake and Sky 
spray, which from the atomizer I like. I'm like, that is really pleasant and clean and musky and fresh and like airy, ozonic as it's called. And then I put it on and it just doesn't behave well with my skin. Like it starts to dry down into like this mishmash of, I don't know, chemical warfare <laughs> on my skin. And I'm like, mm. but I could totally see like on clothing how this would work out well. In fact, I may use this as a linen spray because it does have some redeeming qualities. So anyway, that was the Sephora sale. And then I wanted to update you all on me continuing to cultivate my social media and curate it, as I think is the word I was looking for, curating it. If you remember, in the last video, I was talking about how I was having just like challenges with Instagram and really enjoying the Instagram experience because I felt that it was tainted by some things that creators were doing that I just, I just couldn't get with. It just didn't like vibe with my personality and the way that I like to do things. I wanted Instagram to be fun and it felt like not fun anymore because of some things that were happening in that space. Well, since then, and I said in that video, you know, I am part of the problem if I continue to like view negative posts and negative videos and that my best bet was just to sort of remove myself from that and there's no better way to do that than to reshape the way that your social media experience looks and behaves for you so i set out on this mission to like rethink the things that i am committed to looking at if i'm going to be on social media so for my foundation today i'm going to do the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. And this is in the color 350 Maple, which is a little bit caramelly. Let's see how this works out today. Okay, so we'll put this back on in a minute. But, you know, I'm one of those people that, like, I believe, like, ask and the universe will provide. It'll figure out a way to get you what it is that you think you want and need, except in the form that the universe wants to give it to you in not necessarily what you think it should look like. And that's part of like the fun of being alive and seeing like, what's gonna come to me next? What's the next adventure that's gonna unfold or the next phase or whatever. And so on Facebook, that was one of the places that I was having like the most challenges in terms of curating social media and making sure that what I was looking at and putting my eyes on and dedicating my time to in terms of like absorbing it, right? Because you consume social media like spiritually mentally emotionally sometimes depending on what the content is and you got to be careful just like you do with food you got to be careful what you allow into those spaces so with that said you know i made up my mind that i was going to curate a little bit more and unfollow things that made me unhappy or where i felt like people were just like blatantly misbehaving you know they weren't showing good social media manners People were allowed to run amok and just act crazy. They could say any old things in the comments. Like those groups that are not very well moderated are probably just not for me. I'm a little bit older and I've toned down my mouth a lot from when I was younger. If you had caught me in my 20s, I ran my mouth all the dang time because I thought that everything I had to say was so important that it needed a platform. And as I've gotten older, I have really sort of calmed and toned all of that down and realize you don't always have to say what's on your mind. In fact, you are not entitled just because we are in a country with free speech. If you think about manners, manners say you're not entitled to say what you want all the time in any way, shape or form to whomever. Like it takes a lot of discretion, discernment, and quite frankly, maturity to know when and how to say things and or when to keep your mouth shut because silence is golden sometimes too. <laughs> so, Facebook groups that aren't well moderated, where people are allowed to run their mouths and say mean things, that people are allowed to say comments that are really sort of either dead classe or rude, imposing, you know, intended to create hurt or to jar the person, where people just aren't polite. I think it's like people forget that social media is mixed company and that it is not okay to just, at least in my opinion, you might think differently. Maybe you think it's okay and people can say whatever they want and that that should be tolerated and that the person who is offended is the one with the problem i can't say i'm offended <laughs> there's very little that like actually offends me these days because i've heard it all and seen it all you know and it just doesn't bother me how people think what bothers me is how people treat each other over what they think you get what i'm saying so you can have any political view you can have any religious view heck you can think the world is flat i really don't care i do care how you convey it and how you treat other people as you message things so that said, I have been leaving Facebook groups where I think that the moderators are not really 
doing a good job keeping track of how people are behaving. And I have been following other groups that I think really where people are well-behaved and charming. And it's been a lot of fun. So I want to share with you one group that I have particularly been enjoying. I'm looking off to the side at my mirror here. So I'm sorry if it seems like I am being rude to the camera, but the way things are sitting on this desk in front of me, trust me, you don't want me to move anything else. Things are going to fall off of here. Before I talk about that group, I'm going to be using this Rare Beauty stick bronzer. One thing I realized, even though I purchased, I think, a couple of these stick bronzers, I'd much rather have a cream, just a regular cream in a pot or a powder. I don't know why these, I think it's something about the way that things look in the collection. So it's like one of these things is doing its own thing and it's the bronzer sticks. I like that all of my other bronzers are in squares or rectangles and they sort of play well together. And then I have this. I'm the kind of person that likes symmetry in their life. I like things to be in their place. And I just don't know where and how to store this. And I like to keep all of my like products together. So this is just sort of the odd man out that bothers me. So I'm going to try to make it a point to use this up because I do like it. I like the formula. This is Rare Beauty and this is in the color Always Sunny. And it's, it has a little bit of a reddish tone here in person. You can't really see that very much on the camera. It's nice and brown. And I think on camera, it's showing up pretty neutral. And it's nicely blendable. It's just very easy to work with. So back to Facebook. One of the groups that I have been enamored with is called the Dull Women's Club. Dull Women's Club. Dull, like D-U-L-L. -L. And I would post screenshots, except I don't think that's sort of in keeping with the spirit of being part of the group you know you have to join the group and agree to the group rules and all of that so I, you know i don't want to violate people's comfort level by reposting what they've shared in those groups but here's what i really love about it it's mostly for the most part like middle-aged women although i do think there are younger women in there that have enjoyed it and so far what i'm seeing is people posting pictures of themselves and these sort of like cleverly worded descriptions of why their life is dull but it's like tongue in cheek type of things like, hi, I'm 49 years old. My name is Veronica. Um, I'm living a dull life here in central Virginia. And, you know, and they'll say little, a couple of little facts about themselves and they end with their shoe size, which I think is hilarious. Like my shoe is a size eight and a half. Um, and it's like this honoring of the fact that people don't have to be living these really exciting lives to be part of social media, that it's totally okay to just be sort of hunkered down in the life that you lead, in your boring daily routines, and that there's beauty in the simplicity and boredom of it all. Which brings me to another point about an experience that I had yesterday that I want to share. But let me blend this out so y'all aren't looking at this crazy bronzing thing going on here. Of course, I have 9,486 brushes and can't find one that's really good to blend out bronzer. So I'm just going to try this for now. So anyway, so that's one. And then there is, I forget the exact name of the group, but it's Huga, H-Y-G-G-E which I literally was 49 years old, as in yesterday, when I looked up how you pronounce that. And it's huga. I think it's Danish. Is that correct? A Danish word that means being content and happy in small, pleasant things. So I love that this is also a very highly female group, like the percentage of women, the percentage of people in that group are mostly women who are posting very simple things like, Here's my back porch and me just enjoying my cup of coffee in the sunrise. And this is my huga moment. And I love that because I really think that. So let me back up. This relates to like some moments that I had on spring break. And it's about how like I remember life in a series of moments and pictures and words rather than long, extensive events. So when you look back on your life, at least I do, I think most people would say that this is true, you're remembering literal little moments that added up to something great. So for example, as we were walking around Disney World, which is where we went, and I'll talk about that in a minute, I was loving the memories of the family experiences that I've had there, but the experiences aren't any more than like a second or two of like a flashback in my mind. But I, I would remember like standing in line somewhere to wait, like getting on a ride, waiting to get on a ride and a joke that we told each other and like how we laughed about that or that we had a pretzel over here or that we had ice cream over there or that we watched the fireworks in this one spot. But it isn't like the entirety of the fireworks that goes off in my mind. It's the moment, like literally a five second like snippet or even a second or two of like a visual memory of being somewhere. And it's just so touching. So I love the Huga uh, 
Facebook group because what they're sharing with us are these sort of visual moments of peace, of happiness, of contentment, of not wishing to be anywhere else doing anything else. And like, isn't that the definition for me of happiness? I don't know about you. Being perfectly content in the moment, in the present. So I love both of those Facebook groups for that. The Dull Women's Club for reminding me that it is perfectly fine not to have a whole lot of stuff going on. That you're okay with your day-to-day -day routines and being dull is actually an exciting thing. And then the Huga group for bringing to me these visual moments that people declare as bringing them peace. So my little Huga moment, yesterday, today's Sunday, yesterday was Saturday, and we went downstairs to have breakfast. We usually do, I wouldn't say like a huge breakfast. Sometimes we do a big breakfast on the weekends. I hate bra straps that go down. And no matter what bras I buy or how I adjust them, my bra straps don't behave. It's on my damn nerves. So we were downstairs having breakfast and the day was shaping up to be a really nice day in terms of weather. It was like high 60s, low 70s, and there was a breeze blowing. And I said, let's open the windows. We haven't done that in a while, right? Let's open the windows. And so, as you know, our house faces some woods in the back. And where I sit at the table, like we all have our little assigned seating at the table, you know, where people just sit sort of out of habit. And at my, I'm at one head of the table and my husband's at the other head. But at my end, I can look beyond him. There's like a bay window behind him. And there's the backyard with the trees that are blooming. And it's just this, it was this moment of ultimate like peace with the windows open and the breeze blowing and the sound of the leaves rustling outside, leaves that are now growing again on trees. And there was just this moment of like, I don't need to be anywhere else doing anything else. I am perfectly content and happy. Like it's a moment of bliss. And I love that listening to the wind blow outside reminded me of something really precious in my life. And that is the experience that I had going to boarding school for high school. I was on a really beautiful, almost like a college level campus that had this bucolic environment, rolling hills. It was just beautiful. Uh, and I really loved the experience. I had some fantastic friends there. And one of the things I love the most is in the fall and in the spring, days like that, where we would pop our windows open and the breeze was blowing and we were just hanging out with each other in each other's dorm rooms, or we would go outside onto like the green in front of our dorms and play sports and just like have not one single care in the world. Like you're in the moment, enjoying the beauty of the day. And I felt it like pulsing through my veins yesterday, that same feeling of like, ah, oh, this is bliss. So I am trying to curate my social media in an ongoing basis to continue to give me that type of feeling more so than the feelings that I was getting before in the last video where I keep piling on this bronzer, y'all, because I really want this to be like darker up here. But anyway, like I was saying in the last video, the other posts that the other posts that were really getting to me and making me feel like I was questioning humanity. <laughs> You know, like I can continue feeding that stuff into myself, my psyche, or I can be done with it. Along the same lines, I have been very happily blocking people on social media, particularly on both channels that are just way over the top. People that leave these long, crazy, like psychotic, extensive messages where they have like an ax to grind and they're using my video to espouse their you know, views on everything. Again, it's just, it feels like that stuff is just in poor form. I'm like, you know, that's like inviting. I'll give you an example. So my husband went to a bourbon tasting party on Saturday night with one of his buddies here in the area. And he really enjoys that. You know, they just, they put out like a lot of older bourbons. They do a little tasting and they have like a, um, what do you call it when you have one of those parties where you, it's like March Madness. Oh my God, I'm forgetting the word where you rank things and then they go up. There's a name for it. And of course, I'm going to remember after I finish recording and I'll put it right here for y'all. But anyway, he went to something like that. And there was a mixed crowd of men in the room doing the bourbon tasting. So one of the guys in the room was being a jerk. He was saying inappropriate things. He was making other people in the room feel uncomfortable. I'm going to use a little bit of this Laura Mercier translucent powder to sort of set my face. Um, and he kind of ruined moments for everyone else. 
So it's kind of like one of those things of like, again, social media is mixed company and you have to know like where the boundaries of humorous retorts and comments and back and forth are and when to like lay off. And you also need to understand when it's inappropriate to go on and on in a comment about something you feel personally strongly about, but really isn't related to the content or it's just like it's going down some really kind of bizarre rabbit hole. And I don't mean that to say that I don't appreciate extensive, heartfelt comments. I absolutely do. But there are just a few folks, and they're really on the far extremes. You know, we're not talking about your usual viewers, but there are extreme viewers that, I don't know, they have like doomsday mentality. I had to block one woman who had this like doomsday mentality about the world. And before I knew it, she had posted across five videos, like these five and six paragraph <laughs> comments that were all about how like our food supply is contaminated. And how there's hormones in our meat and how the you know, people in the early 1900s didn't have to deal with what we have to deal with now. And she was just going on and on and on in a way that was really uncomfortable, even looking at the comments. I was like, I think you've taken the conversation just way too far. I don't think we're compatible as a content creator and a viewer. <laughs> I think you might need some other channel that where this kind of commentary will resonate with the audience and where you will be heard but it's not gonna be my videos. You're not gonna be leaving essay length comments across my videos about your views on how our food supply is contaminated and how the medical establishment is against humanity and these conspiracy theories. I just can't do it. It just, that's not what I'm here for. And so it became apparent to me that this was someone who could not be managed. <laughs> and I just, I had to block her. I had to block her for myself and for all of you as viewers. Like, I don't want you down in the comments seeing that stuff and going, whoa, is this person okay? Like, are they all right? And then on the other channel, I had a woman who has watched me for a while. So I was a little bit perturbed by this. She had gone off the scene for a little bit and then she came back and she came back with some kind of ax to grind. And she left some comments on my videos that were kind of offensive to me and totally uncalled for. Like I'm all about people being able to have their own opinions and share them. However, again, it's all in the way that you do things. And if you're doing it in a way that's rude and intended to be mean to me, uh-uh, uh-uh, we're not playing that game. I'm like, I'm too old for that. I don't have time for that. I don't have energy to give back to that person. And I don't think that person should be giving me, part of my French, their shitty energy. And so I also noticed that she was leaving very similarly rude comments on my peers' videos. She even called one of my peers gross for something that she thought the peer shouldn't be doing. And it was, it was nasty. I was like, this is where I draw the line. Like, no, we don't, we choose who we allow into our lives. I realize social media is a little bit different in that as a content creator, you are literally posting something for the world to see. <laughs> and as such, you attract all types of people. But for the person that is foolish enough and mean enough, mean-spirited enough and damaged internally enough to be leaving comments that are meant to be hurtful, spiteful, mean, like mean girl stuff, I'm like, mm-mm. We don't play those games here. So she got blocked. And I have no, I didn't lose a second of sleep over that. I was like, you gotta go. So here's the thing, like the party on Saturday night that my husband went to, the host actually texted the other people the next day and said, I'm so sorry for so-and-so's behavior. He will not be returning to any of these parties in the future. Thank God. So now my husband can go to the future parties and feel comfortable, you know, not be uncomfortable because there's someone in the room making absolutely obnoxious, inappropriate comments to people. I mean, if I told y'all some of the stuff this man said, you would, you would clutch your pearls. Similarly, there's people that leave comments that I'm like, are you okay? Do we need to get you some counseling? Do you need some therapy? Because this is not the channel for that. And I have to block them. So I have been happily blocking people that don't behave themselves in the video party comments. You get what I'm saying? How are you about that? Are you that way? In, I'm like that way in my real life. So, you know, here's the thing. In my day-to-day -day life, I'm that way. If somebody, I'm like that type of person. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. Except I have a little bit of a caveat. If you remember from a previous video, I said I do give people a second chance. Just like I would want one. You know, if I did had an off day and maybe said something or behaved in a way that was a little bit like untoward, I would hope that the person would maybe acknowledge that maybe I was just a little off that day. But when you see repeated behavior from someone who has a pattern of showing you that they are combative, that they want to be argumentative, that they have an ax to grind, that they have something to prove, they have issues, 
internal issues that have nothing to do with you, I, in my real life, have drawn the line a lot quicker in my older age. Like once I see that, I'm like, oh, you know, I don't think we can be friends. I'm gonna have to like slowly move away from this situation, cut off ties, shift things, you know, because we just don't have time and energy for that in our lives, right? So like, why should I allow that on social media? I don't think so. I'm over here putting effort into my videos. I'm being vulnerable and I'm sharing things and somebody wants to come, just act like a mean person in the comments. Go on with that. Take that somewhere else. It's not welcome here. So <laughs> I have been sort of proudly curating, not just the social media that I consume, but the people that I allow into my social media. Now that said, somebody could be hate watching you and you don't know because they won't leave a comment. They'll thumbs down your video though. I know who some of those folks are, but in terms of leaving a comment that you all are going to see, I feel like it's part of my duty as a content creator to keep my comment space as friendly and fun and congenial and informative and all of those things as possible. And like weed out the mean girls and mean guys who just, just want to be nasty, you know, like find something better to do, pick somebody else. Before I go on, I'm going to go into the Natasha Denona pastel palette. Remember this pretty thing? I purchased it last year. These beautiful sort of spring colors. I don't know what kind of look I'm going to do. I think I want to sort of stick in this kind of pinky deal here and maybe use that and this and that in the crease. Let's see how the look comes up. You know, let me try something a little different today. So let me go into this feather for the background there and then we'll keep going. So I have been a lot happier in terms of my social media consumption. Now, some of you would say, well, why do you consume social media at all? Well, friend, you're here watching me. <laughs> this is what we like. I do like and enjoy social media. I hope that you enjoy watching this channel. I hope this brings you some joy or satisfaction or information or aha moments or company, even if it's just company that my channel keeps you. If you wonder why I'm looking off there, it's because I'm using the camera here. I'm recording on my phone to reflect back to me how my makeup is shaping up. So I'm using you as a mirror. <laughs> so yeah, I'm continuing to curate is the long and short of it, my social media. And I have been enjoying it a lot more since I've made some decisions about what to follow and unfollow. Okay, let's move on. I want to tell you about Dune 2, the movie. And then I want to tell you a little bit about my Disney and Universal experience for spring break. So in the last video, I mentioned that we watched Dune 1 and that I loved it. A little bit hard to follow all the storylines and all of that. So I would say this, if you go to see Dune, first of all, see Dune 1. The Dune 1 that recently came out, I think it was 2020 or something like that, with Timothée, Timothée, Timothée Chalamet and Zendaya. You have to see that. But then do like a synopsis of that movie so you understand who the players are. And like they talk about houses that ascend to power, houses like of families and things like that, that ascend to power in this fantasy sci-fi universe. So you need to see that before you see Dune 2. So hubby and I went to see Dune 2. The kids were off doing something else. And let me tell you something, friends, that movie is a full three hours. No, I'm lying to you. Excuse me. It's two hours and 45 minutes. It could have been two days and 45 minutes, and I would have watched every single second of it. I'm not even a sci-fi person. Hubby loves Star Wars, like that whole thing. So we watched that. We watched The Mandalorian and all that stuff. So I watch it with him, and in that sense, I enjoy it. But I don't like seek it out for myself. You know what I'm saying? We watched Dune 2, and I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. Not necessarily because of the exciting like action scenes there are some amazing action scenes in there but because of the entire thing the cast the world the cinematography the way that scenes were shot the lighting in the scenes the dialogue the pauses and the quickenings in the movie were just so expertly done it sort of like brought back my, back my faith in cinematography cinema being able to help you sort of escape from your world it was everything that you want a movie to be. It had everything in it that you could want. I could see it appealing to people of all ages. It was gripping. And that lead actor, Timothy, whose real name is pronounced Timote, French dad, Chalamet, Timothy Chalamet, I mentioned that he reminds me of my son. So the entire time, again, it was like I was watching my son in this almost three hour movie, and it was so gripping. I, I don't want to give anything away except to say it's 
like as a movie, as far as a movie goes, close to like a masterpiece movie status. A must see, a must see. If you enjoy movies, if you have any enjoyment out of some sci-fi, there's a lot of sort of Star Warsy stuff in it, but it goes so much deeper. And there's like a lot of like political analogy of the movie to uh, the era of imperialism and colonialism in our own world history and all of that. And you know, you don't have to believe all of that to enjoy the movie, but it's interesting if you understand that background. The cast of the movie is phenomenal. In addition to Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet, there are some other really huge names in the movie, including Javier Bardem, I think is how you say his name, who is amazing, amazing performance. Every movie that I've gone to see, I've had to get up and pee <laughs> somewhere in the movie. You know, y'all, I held that bladder. I held it. I could not leave that movie theater. I didn't want to miss a second of whatever was happening on the screen. Would absolutely say to go see it. We're still watching Naked and Afraid in other news. <laughs> we, my husband thinks maybe there's like 200 episodes to get through. We're probably through about 100. That show continues to fascinate me. And I still look forward to watching it at night. So the show From, if you remember me talking about that a while back, the, the premise of the show From is that there is this like town out in the middle of nowhere. And as people are driving through the town, if they take a wrong street, the, the street loops right back into the town. And so they get into this endless loop where they can never escape the town. And the town at night has zombies that come out. It sounds so dumb, but it is so dang good. And the townspeople are terrified of the zombies, but they only come out at night. During the day when the sun's out, there's no threat of the zombies. And the only way that you can escape the zombies is to have like a talisman that you put on your door to keep them out. Otherwise they can like break windows and come into your house and they gut people. Like they eat their insides. It's so crazy. But the dynamics in that movie are so dang good. So that's supposed to be coming on this summer and I just can't wait. The other thing, help me out friends, who out there is a Stranger Things fan, that 80s show? And it's not an 80s show, excuse me. It's about the 80s. It's set in the 80s or it starts off in the 80s rather but then it progresses, but it was produced like in modern, modern times. So I think there is a last season, like a season five of that show that's supposed to come out. And isn't it this summer? Is the last season coming out? Because I am personally 100% obsessed with Millie Bobby Brown, the girl that plays 11. The number 11 is the name of the girl in Stranger Things. I have this like strange obsession with her where I think like I was her mother or something in a previous life. <laughs> It's so stupid. It makes no sense. But I am waiting and waiting for that show to come back out. I need something to sort of darken up this look. I mean, I could leave it sort of fresh eyed like this and not get, maybe I will. I don't know. I always feel like I need like a little bit of a warm tone, like take some bronzer and run it through the back. Maybe I'll just take some of this color here that's called Bora. This is a cream to shadow formula, cream to powder. In other words, it's a little bit creamy in the pan and you pick it up and then it sort of transforms into powder on your skin. So then let's talk about Disney and Universal. Y'all know I love me some Disney and Universal. I took a bunch of House of Sillage decants of fragrances that match the park. So I'll talk about that on my other channel. I was really proud of myself. <laughs> I was like all proud of and impressed with myself that I had matched like Minnie Mouse to Hollywood Studios, Mickey Mouse to Magic Kingdom, Avatar to Animal Kingdom. And why am I forgetting the last one? Oh, duh, Minnie Mouse 100, the purple one to Epcot Center because the top of that looks like Epcot Center. And y'all, I was pleased as punch. I thought I was so cute. And I also took Hufflepuff to wear to one of the Universal Parks because they have the ha ha hair. Try again. They have the <laughs> Harry Potter world. So I am so amused with all of those parks. The key is to not go when I went. Like I went during spring break. And the crowds are just stupid. I mean, it is so thick. It's thick, thick, like thick thigh thick in those parks. <laughs> You're all up on top of each other. Dang. I save money for those trips and I splurge, you know, and I get like the fast passes at Universal. I do all the Disney genie stuff at the Disney parks and all of that, because if I can skip a line, I'm gonna skip a line, but you can't skip them all. And there are still some lines that you have to wait in, but you know, there's pros and cons. Let me finish this makeup and then I'll come back and tell you all that. Cause I feel like I'm taking too long to get into the details. Okay, so I think this is what we're gonna go with for the final look. My lipstick is called Fashion, and this is from the brand called Merit. I do like their lipsticks. I have a bunch of their products, and I think their lipsticks are the best. They're nice and creamy. It's a good color, like a purpley, pinky, purpley, 
pinky, purpley, magenta color. <laughs> and the eyes are kind of monochrome, but whatever. Look at my grays, y'all. One day I'm going to just let my grays grow out. I'm not ready for that, but I think soon I will just let my hair do its natural thing. But for now, I'm kind of enjoying dyeing it. I have like an inch and a half of growth and I don't see my hairstylist till the end of the month. I'm filming this on April, is it the 15th? The 14th, April 14th. Anyway, what I wanted to say about Disney and Universal. So are you a fan of the Disney Universal parks? and maybe SeaWorld and whatever else. There's a bunch of parks down in Florida in particular. There's Disneyland and there's Universal Studios out in California as well. I have been to the ones in California too, and I much prefer the ones in Florida, more so for nostalgic reasons than anything else, and because they have the full range of Disney parks. So there are four major theme parks for Disney. Animal Kingdom, well, Magic Kingdom was the first, and then came along Epcot, and then came along Hollywood Studios, and I think Animal Kingdom was the last one. And they've got some other locations that are family entertainment, like Blizzard Beach, which is a water park. I've never been there, and I don't really have an interest in the water parks piece. That, to me, is not where the magic is. And then for Universal, there was Universal Studios first, and then Universal Islands of Adventure. And I think there's a third park being built called Epic. Is that in Florida? I don't even know. I'm not keeping up with all the news, but I think I saw that and would like to go back for that. So for me, here are some of the pros and cons of Disney in particular. And then for me, Universal is like an added bonus. I've been going to Disney World since I was a kid. That was one of the vacations that my mom took us on. And it was like, even though we didn't have a lot growing up, she somehow pieced together a vacation to Disney probably every three or four years or so. And we loved it. So this year I decided to stay on Disney property. I've never done that. So if you're not familiar with Disney, one of the most fun things is when you approach Disney property, which is many, 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 many acres, square miles of space that Disney owns or occupies in central Florida. There are there's like an archway that says like welcome to Walt Disney World and you know you've arrived and get really excited when you see that archway because your car goes under that archway. I've never stayed on Disney property. I've stayed at a lot of other hotels in the area, but this time I stayed at the Dolphin, the Walt Disney World Dolphin Hotel. It's called the Swan and Dolphin and they have like their own little resort area. And then there's there's so many different Disney hotels. They're all uh unbelievably expensive even their budget hotels i think are expensive for what you get and then the luxurious accommodations like one day i'd like to stay at the polynesian which is right across the lagoon from magic kingdom and magic kingdom is the park that has the cinderella castle and sort of the original disney theming but the polynesian when i looked and this was a while back they were in the seven to eight hundred dollar range per night Ooh, that's not counting resort fees that's not counting your meals the parking, nothing. So we were going to stay eight nights. You do the math on how that adds up quickly. And then the Grand Floridian is one that I've always wanted to stay at too. Very beautiful. One of the original Disney hotels. That one is in the same price range and up. I mean, you can get up into the thousand and plus a night range easily, sometimes a lot more. Like there are these bungalows for the Polynesian that sit on the lagoon water which is really neat because you get to see the fireworks and these sort of light displays that come by on boats and things like that. And just like be on property as close to the, the magic kingdom as you can get. And those bungalows, I mean, <laughs> goodness gracious, it's like a mortgage, you know, to stay there every night. So I couldn't do that, but I did stay at the dolphin, which was expensive enough, especially when you start tagging on a daily resort fee of an extra $40 and an extra $35 to park, you know, things add up. So that was about as expensive as I was willing to get. And I like that from there, you can walk to Epcot Center and you can walk to Hollywood Studios. So that was really cool. Or you could take these little boats that take you there in the morning and bring you back at night. So you don't have to fuss with like driving onto property and parking and going through all of that drama. So I like the entire concept of Walt Disney World property and how cool it is to stay at one of these hotels or actually in the vicinity of the parks and being really close. There's something really sort of magical and special about that that I like. I also am a big fan of Disney magic, which it's one of those things like because I've gone so much as a kid and as a young adult and now in my um, middle age adult years, I mean, gosh, I think I've been to Disney. I don't know y'all somewhere somewhere between 12 and 15 trips something like that maybe more i've been a lot and i always feel this sense of wonder and magic and like youthfulness walking into the parks 
and seeing all of the little touches to the architecture, the way that the parks are designed, they're all so heavily themed. Like even Cinderella's castle, you could sit there at Magic Kingdom and stare at that castle for hours and just find new little nooks and crannies and things and parts of the design that are unique and interesting and different and just make you fall in love with the place. Of course, they have the characters that come out every so often and you can take photos of them with them if you want to stand in line. The rides are usually a really interesting experience. These are not the parks that you go to if you like thrills. So if you're a roller coaster junkie, go somewhere else. You go to Disney because you like the fantasy that it puts on for you. There are a lot of like animatronics on the rides. I hope I said that right. I always feel like I'm have too many syllables in that word, but there are a lot of like almost like stuffed animals, if you want to call them that, in full size moving around in the rides. There's some really cute stuff. And what I love, especially this year, is that each of the four major parks has an anchor big people's ride. So in Magic Kingdom, it's the roller coaster Tron. And that is so fun. Like you lean forward like you're riding on a bicycle and they lock you in and it's really fast moving and fun. At Hollywood Studios, you have several thrill rides there. You have the Tower of Terror, which brings you up, opens these doors so you can see out onto the park and it drops you. And it's really sort of fun. It's designed after the Twilight Zone show. And it's really, I mean, it's just, it's spooky. It gets your heart rate going. I've been on it many times and I still get kind of a little scared every time I get on it. There's the uh, Aerosmith Rock and Roller Coaster, but that was down when I was there. And then they have something called the Rise of the Resistance in this land built in Hollywood Studios that is themed after Star Wars. So you literally feel like immersed in a Star Wars world. They have the spaceships from Star Wars, replicas of those full size. They're in that part of the park. And it is just amazing the amount of detail put into it. The ride called Rise of the Resistance is second to none. My favorite ride at Disney, it's multi-part. So there's like staging for it when you're in line. And then you go through like these little segments before you get on the actual ride. And it's just like a bit of a, a mind-blowing experience. There's a big wow factor there. For Animal Kingdom, they have a whole section of the park that's themed after the movie Avatar. And it's called Pandora, like in the avatar movie and you really feel like you're on the set of pandora it is absolutely fabulous mind-blowing there's a ride there called the passage passage of avatar passage of flight passage of flight flight of passage <laughs> i've been on it like a gazillion times and it's i don't even want to ruin it for you you just you have to get on it it makes you feel like you are on the back of one of the banshees in the avatar movie it's phenomenal that experience and then Epcot recently got a new ride uh, based on Guardians of the Galaxy called Cosmic Rewind. The th and, and it's a, an inside roller coaster that is just a fabulous experience. The thing about these things is you have to get these passes on Disney Genie to be able to get on them and or line up your experience, like queue up for it. I won't get into all the details of that because it's really freaking complicated. And I had to watch numerous videos to get a good understanding of how all of that worked. This was a few years ago and I've retained that information since then. And so I know all the tips and tricks to get on the rides because if you don't do these passes and if you don't do them at certain times, for example, one of the queues opens at 7 a.m. in the morning and you literally, y'all gonna think I'm lying. You literally have to queue yourself up to the world clock so that the very nanosecond that the world clock hits 7 a.m., you have to be on the app tapping the button to get the tickets. If you miss that by like the chinny chin chin, the hair on your chinny chin chin, you're done. You're not going to be able to get on it all day. You know, that kind of thing. And I find that really disappointing for what Disney charges you to come into those parks. At peak season, you could be paying close to $200 a ticket per person. On top of that, you have to pay for the Disney Genie app, which allows you to queue up for these rides and things like that. Not to mention the parking, if you're paying for that. Now, if you're on Disney property, you don't pay for parking. But like big whoop, because you're paying so much for the hotel anyway. It's like, is that really a perk? I don't know. Um, and then inside the parks, of course, you're paying these horrendous amounts for food. And you have to reserve restaurants and all of this in peak season or know the tips and tricks of like when to walk into restaurants so that they're not crowded. Otherwise, you're like eating popcorn or, you know, one of those big pretzels from the vendors or ice cream. And who wants to eat that all day? But like, you know, everything adds up. And it's so expensive. The dang pretzels are like $7 plus a drink. It's $4. So it's like $11 just to hydrate and get a quick little snack. 
So, you know, you do that several times a day and it adds up, not to mention your meals and that sort of thing. Like we ate at the Brown Derby restaurant at Hollywood Studios, which I've never eaten at, but I've wanted to. And we went in for lunch and it was just two of us at this particular restaurant. By the time that we were done, the bill was like almost $100 for lunch. <laughs> For lunch. You know, that's not even counting dinner. You have to be willing to drop some money to really enjoy yourself at Disney World. And the same thing for Universal. You know, the passes, the fast passes to get to the front of the line and get on first, those passes sometimes cost more than the actual admission ticket to the park. So, you know, if you're traveling with a big group of people, goodness gracious, it adds up tremendously. It's a very, very expensive, expensive trip. But I love it. I love the nostalgia of it. I have lots of memories of all of that. I love the way Disney and Universal both like immerse you in these creative world designs and these sets that they have. For example, at Universal, they have the Harry Potter world. There's one with a castle at Islands of Adventure, which is just phenomenal how they've put it together and the way that they've done the architecture. So the castle is actually really small, but it tricks your eye into thinking it's huge and it goes way into the sky and all of this. And then the one at Universal Studios is called Diagon Alley. And you don't even know it's there. You have to know when you're walking around the park that there's this little entrance that looks like you're going into a train station. It's hidden. And you walk through that entrance. It's sort of like this diagonal thing. And all of a sudden, you come up onto this beautiful world called Diagon Alley with all of these little Harry Potter shops. There's an enormous like dragon on the top of one of the buildings that breathes out fire every, I don't know, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes or something. And some really cool rides that are themed around Harry Potter. So I love the magic of it all. I love getting sort of lost in all of the theming, the details, the way that they have created this immersive magical experience. You have to like that. If you think that's cheesy, you're going to hate it and not have a good time at all. In other news, one thing I really cannot stand about going, <laughs> well, and this is my fault, I went at high season, you know, so you go for spring break, you're going to get spring break crowds. I know this and I know how to navigate those crowds, but they still annoy me. And just like I was saying before with social media and bad manners, there are so many bad manners at these parks. And a lot of it, I will say, revolves around kids who are impatient, they're tired, they're thirsty, they're standing on these long lines and all of that. And I have some sympathy for that. And I know that parents, you know, they can't always control every detail of how a child behaves. So you need to understand that if you're going to be standing in line with folks, like you just need to be patient. But the amount of it's things like this, <laughs> open mouth sneezing, mind you, these crowds are heavy. You know, you got folks from all over the world, different ages, different immune systems, and you got people just sneezing out into the huge crowd, letting their germs just disperse everywhere, coughing into the air, not covering their mouths, things like that, that I'm just like, ew, I cannot deal with that sort of behavior. And the prices are annoying. Everything costs. You get nickel and dimed to death at the parks. And, you know, you just have to know that and like set aside your funding and know, look, I'm just going to blow this money. I'm not even going to think about it. I have to not worry about what things cost if I want to stay hydrated and eat and whatever. You could bring your drinks into the park and your sandwiches and whatever, but then you have to carry around that backpack. And I'm just not about that life. Like I just put my little fanny pack on. I want to be as unencumbered as possible moving to those parks. I don't want big, heavy bags on me. I've had those days. Like I've been the young mom that has the backpack and the carriage and the this and the that. And I empathize with those people tremendously, but I'm past that. And I don't want to drag a lot of stuff around me with me in the park. So yeah, I'd rather pay the almost $4 for a bottle of water and rather pay the whatever amount to eat rather than save money bringing stuff in that I have to lug around. But that's just me. If you can get past all of that, <laughs> which sounds miserable and a lot, there's so much beauty and magic and like indulging of the inner youthful child in Disney and Universal that I, I just can't get enough of. I think we're gonna take a break for about a year and maybe do something else vacation wise. I don't know what that is. I mean, there's some things I'd love to do. I'd love to like go to a dude ranch. I'd love to go to Spain and Portugal. I'd love to go to France. Um, at some point in the far future, because this will be a super expensive trip, I'd like to take the family to South Africa on safari. Um, and but you know, gosh, that's that's some that's some coin. <laughs> I have to really save up for those long flights for the excursion experiences. It's a chunk of change. 
It's a chunk of change. My son really wants to go to Japan. I've been thinking about that too. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. I have to think about it and kind of weigh out how much enjoyable family time we're going to have and how much of it will be like tainted by cost and lines and people's rude habits and all of that sort of thing. How are you about vacation? Are you just like a beach person? Do you like to just go somewhere, sit on the beach, put your toes in the sand and just forget about the world? Do you enjoy an action vacation where you're constantly moving and doing things? Do you like a shopping vacation where you're going to someplace ritzy, like let's say Rodeo Drive on Beverly Hills and like popping in and out of shops? What do you like to do for your vacation experience? I kind of like it all and I like a mix. But I have to tell you, Disney Universal just it just has a special place in my heart that I can't I can't really adequately describe. Okay, I have kept y'all long enough. I don't even know what else to say. I probably had. Oh, I don't want to tell y'all how I packed. <laughs> I didn't pack a lot. I packed t-shirts and leggings. That's it. I didn't pack no makeup. I did take some skincare because I wanted to stay on top of that. I didn't even blow dry my hair the entire time I was there. I just washed and let it air dry. Egad, who does that? <laughs> I didn't take any jewelry, nothing, just t-shirts, leggings, tennis shoes, or I call them sneakers. Y'all call them tennis shoes, some of y'all, and some basic skincare. And I took like my vitamins and things like that. And that was it. That was it. And I loved it. I enjoyed it. That's it. I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks for hanging with me this long and listening to my rambling. Check out the Dull Women's Club. If you're a guy, check out the Dull Men's Club. I've seen those postings too. I don't want to join that group, but you may want to join that. And check out, type in the word Huga, H-Y-G-G-E. I have no idea how that spelling gets translated into Huga as a pronunciation, pronunciation, but that's what it is. Check that out too on Facebook or other social media and curate some beauty in your social media stream that you can lay back and enjoy and get a little bit of the negativity out. All right, y'all take care. See you in the next video.